Hello everybody, it's the uh, Thursday the 8th of November, um, it's the end of the day uh, and um, this is my third video this week um, on the subject of universal credit but not just that, I've got to speak quite quietly because people are trying to get to sleep <laughs> next door, uh, yeah so um, I've been, well this morning I was supposed to be out with my mates from the World People's Assembly um, protesting outside the local job centre, protesting against universal credit, handing out leaflets about where to go for help locally. Um, sod's law, we got rained off, <laughs> which is always a risk, um, campaigning out on the street, particularly this time of year, obviously. So uh, that's been, well, I basically made a decision to move that to tomorrow. Just tomorrow morning's forecast is we'll get um, a full two hours to do it, which is good. Um, and like I said, we're all, this is in the last video, we're hoping to interview people who would like to tell us their stories, you know, about what's going on. Um, so that should be tomorrow, so look out on Saturday for that video. Um, so yeah, that didn't happen this morning, but I ended the day doing something good and something I enjoyed but not something I was expecting to do really which was uh, uh, pop over the road to Morrison's and uh, sit there for two hours selling poppies for the Royal British Legion and I haven't done that for 20 years something like that mm. yeah 20 years plus years um, I used to do it as an army cadet every single year because you do sort of thing you do do in town and then uh, when I was an adult instructor in the army cadet force around here obviously we'd organise that and do it but uh, as the years went on <laughs> my political awareness sort of grew and my political uh, opinions changed um, and I became more and more wary of the military um, and more opposed to um, national, uh, nationalism and uh, how it's all wrapped up with the military and things and obviously as Iraq came about and then Afghanistan before it and all that continued and Libya, Syria, all of these sort of disastrous interventions obviously that's just consolidated my uh, my views on, on nationalism and militarism so anyway, <laughs> that was uh, it was good in the end because uh, as it was in the ward that I represent, in Morrison's, I actually got to meet um, by mistake because we were both booked to be there at the same time to help out um, two local parents and their uh, fantastic daughters who are the May Queens, two of the May Queens uh, of Real. Uh, fantastic young ladies and their mums who go around tirelessly raising money for local charities and local causes particularly um, uh, cancer charities which is fantastic local ones um, so that was brilliant um, so uh, yeah it was uh, interesting to do after all these years and fantastic to meet them uh, but anyway, that's not the main topic. <laughs> the main topic for this video, the third of the Universal Credit videos this week, is well, in my last video on my channel, um, The Struggle UK, uh, I had quite a few comments, all of them very kind, very supportive and uh, knowledgeable people commenting on Universal Credit and how difficult it is. Um, to claim it basically to verify your identity and uh, how in their opinion and mine they agree with me that it was clearly there by design to deter people to try and stop people claiming universal credit uh, and I think this belies what um, I was conversations I'd had in the past with friends um, who haven't been or had to claim benefits 
or been on the welfare system, which is good in their lives. So they haven't been, they haven't been in that position, which is fantastic. But but, but uh, believed what the media were telling them that universal credit was a uh, a good idea, an improvement, just badly delivered or poorly delivered. And I'd say to them, well, no, it's not a good idea. It's not a, it's not a better idea than what was there. It's not that it's just as poorly delivered. If it's coming from Ian Duncan Smith and the Tories, to replace what was there before, it's being done to punish people and make sure as fewer people as possible can claim. And the Tories, <laughs> just never listen to what a Tory tells you. Look at what they do. And if you look at what they do, if you look at the figures, you see child poverty has risen, homelessness has risen, food banks have uh, exploded all over the country, you know, not obviously, but uh, the usage for food banks or the need for food banks, uh, suicides and people uh, trying to claim or waiting to claim uh, or claiming. Um, Premature deaths from uh, ESA claimants. Um, it's just, if you look at the figures, that's all you need to do. Um, and in one of the comments, somebody said that this was deliberate and uh, Ian Duncan Smith, people like that, should be um, in court. And uh, <laughs> this this gets to the number bit for me. Yes, they should be. Because this, it, none of this is by mistake, this is by design. Ian Duncan Smith created a policy which he knew would result in these sorts of results and have the impact it's had socially. Because when governments design policies, they carry out impact assessments which tell them what will happen, give them some sort of ideas, numbers, and what will happen to people, as opposed to the, what's the system that's gone before. So they had they knew before they implemented it roughly what would happen. Uh, so this sort of claim in England, I'm afraid, is, is just as a mosh, and uh, it's got to the point where it's not just me saying that and people commenting on on my video. Uh, even John McDonnell, the Shadow Chancellor for Labour, um, supports calls to see Ian Duncan Smith face trial. Because, don't forget, these are policies, this is a policy, universal credit, and benefit sanctions, etc. And the way they messed around with um, disability sort of benefits, and the so-called assessments. They, the result of their meddling with those, and their policies, uh, has been horrendous. Has literally, has literally directly led to the premature, unexpected, and pointless suffering and deaths of hundreds of thousands of people over the past five, six years. Um, and when this came out, last year I think it was, that was after a year of battling, um, the government battling uh, in court, trying to keep it secret. So, you know, don't tell me that this is by, this is all by mistake. It's because it's not. If it was by mistake, the government would have looked at the figures, if they hadn't already known, looked at the figures, realised what it was doing to people, and changed policy. The reason that that was not their instinct, but their instinct was instead to spend public money for almost a year, if not more than a year, in the uh, Court of Appeal, trying to overturn a decision by the information commissioner's office to release the death statistics I think that's all you need to know they were trying, their instinct was to bury it to bury the facts and to carry on um, now when those the death stats were released over a year ago um, they were obviously released in the most confusing way they possibly could release them so it was hard to decipher exactly um, where people were at the time of, the, of their deaths, how many people had died on this benefit or that benefit, but uh, you're talking about hundreds of thousands um, 
from what I saw. And that was more than a year ago. Um, so yes, they, Ian Duncan Smith, Esther McVeigh, and Pretty Patel, so the architects of of all of this, should should not well, they should not only not be uh, because they're not fit to be um, ministers or in charge of government policy. They should each be in a criminal court facing charges. Um, it's state sponsored mass murder, and what's worse is what's worse is it targets a specific section of society, which is the disabled and the poor, because that those are the people that need to claim these benefits. This this is what this this is who the safety net was designed for back in nineteen well after the war. Um, the 45 government, Labour government. Of course, the Tories don't. <laughs> they never wanted a welfare state. The Tories, they they exist to protect the interests of the rich and powerful. Not you and me. Um, you and me are supposed to be cheap labour for the rich and powerful. Um, another side effect, another purpose, purposeful side effect of... Um, of the climate we're in, which is that people are desperate to take any kind of job at all for zero, you know, zero hours, short hours. Um, they'll let uh, their work and rights go as long as they can keep their jobs. So th this is all by design. <laughs> it's basically, you know, paid slavery um, in 2018 in Tory Britain. Um, I've always loved history. I wanted to do history at university, but uh, they wouldn't let me. <laughs> I think they thought I was too dim, basically, uh, which is why I ended up doing law. Very funny. I'll <laughs> tell you our stories some other time. But, um, you know, I've always liked history. I've always been interested in Victoria, Britain, um, 100 years on from the First World War um, and the Edwardian period. And we're here. Um, but uh, you don't need a time machine to relive the worst of those uh, days a hundred years ago. You know, they're, they're back. The Tories have made sure that they've revisited on, or been revisited on the poorer parts of the country. Um, so yeah, they should be in the dock, along with Tony Blair, for his war crimes. Will they be? I doubt it. I doubt it, um, but I, I, I wish there would be. I mean, only today I was on Facebook and there's another story, yet another story, about Esther McVeigh, who's the Work and Pensions um, Minister again, lying. <laughs> it was a uh, mind coming out, uh, specifically denying that they support universal credit, as Esther McVeigh had claimed they do. Um, she's constantly being caught out lying, yet nothing's done about it. She lies in Parliament, she lies to select committees, the Work and Pension Select Committee, she lies to the public, yet nothing seems to um, knock her off her perch. So, yeah, anyway, uh, we can only hope they'll face uh, the charges that, I mean, look, Let's put it this way: If this, if 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 a government in Africa, or the Far East, or South America, had devised policies to virtually economically enslave and kill off the weakest of a, uh, members of a certain group, social group, ethnic group, we would be calling. The leaders in this country and the US and all over the world will be calling for their trial in The Hague or somewhere similar. So, you know, the only difference is I'm sitting in Britain um, where the establishment get what they want uh, and where apparently no corruption exists only in other countries. Anyway, sorry, ranting. <laughs> Um, 
I know many of you feel the same, same way. So yeah, uh, I'll be out tomorrow morning, first thing. Hopefully the rain will stay off. Um, hopefully we'll, uh, I'll take a video of, of what's happening and how it all goes. And uh, hopefully get some, not too harrowing, but interesting stories that, that sort of highlight and throw into into relief, sharp relief, what's actually happening to people here. Um, I mean, I know my first hand anyway, but it'd be good to put it up for the world to see. And, uh, yeah, stay safe, take care, comment as you see fit. This video will go up on my channel, The Struggle UK, and on, excuse me, The Real People's Assembly channel as well, uh, as will tomorrow's uh, campaign video. So, uh, ciao for now, ciao from Jay. There he is, Jay. Someone, <laughs> someone commented when I put my, one of my, my first video up, I think, of the Universal Credit, uh, about the Universal Credit campaign, um, on Facebook, that, uh, having a poster of Chow was a bad luck, and I asked why, but I haven't, uh, I haven't expanded on, <laughs> expanded on the, on why that would be. So, uh, yeah. Try to stay colour coordinated. Let me tie a flag. That's actually a Unite, Unite banner. And, uh, Jay. But, uh, yeah. Thanks for listening to my ramblings, <laughs> as usual. And take care. See you next time.